us to sing a Bible song? You got one? What song would you like to sing? <gasps> yes. Do you have a, a ch church? A song from Sunday school? A song from church? A song from chapel? Cole. That's your Bible verse. Yes, that's awesome. You got a song that you like to sing? Is this a song? Who knows that song? Do you, my fifth graders know it? You want to stand up here and help us sing it? All right. These are my helpers for today's chapel, so they're going to stand up here and help us sing. All right, you have your starting note? Love, what is the first note? God called your heart. But you got to sing it. What's the song? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. That, that's all. <laughs> Y'all give him a hand of applause. That was pretty good. Got anything else you can sing for us? A song you know? All right, thank you very much. Are we ready up there yet? Still working on it. Delia, oh, how great thou art. You know, I happen to know that there's some fourth and fifth graders who know how to sing that, okay? But we won't sing it the fancy way like they sing it, but uh, let's see if I can start it the right way without being too low. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made what's up what's up in the sky at night i see the stars i hear the rolling thunder thy power throughout the universe displayed. All right, I bet you younger kids know some of this. Can you sing? Then sings my soul. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Come on, second graders. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art. Who is thou? Who are we singing that to? God, you know, he's so great, we can't even, we got, we got power, y'all. I think it's fixing to come on. So, Lily, will you come up and lead us in an opening prayer? That was very nice. I love that. That was good. Bow your heads, please. Dear Lord, please help everyone to have a great day and to worship you. Thank you for everything you have blessed us with, and please help everyone who is not feeling well to heal and to be better. Thank you for this day and our education. In your name. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Oh, now we got uh, Nolan. Come on, share your verses with us. Our first song is called We Will Stand Together. See if these verses go with that. Who will rise uh, who will rise up for me against the wicked? Who will take a stand for me against the evildoers? Psalm nineteen um, ninety four sixteen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians four thirteen. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Ephesians six ten. Does that say I can do all things by myself? No. Through who? Through Christ who gives me strength. Does that mean, does that say I can stand strong in myself? No. It says stand strong in the power of his might. Y'all stand up. Let's stand together on this song. Upon him. 
Our next song is Come Thou Almighty King. I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I will praise the name of the Lord with song and shall magnify him with thanksgiving. Can you guess what part of that's my favorite? I will praise the name of the Lord with song. So let's come do that. Stand up. We'll do that with our next song. Olivia's going to read our verses that go with our last song, 
you gave. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. 1 John 3.16 I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives with me, in me. Then life I know, I now live in the body. I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20 let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Psalms 19.14. All right, let's stand for our last song right before Mr. Jason comes to speak to us. You gave. I want you to sing this to the Lord. Don't sing it to me. Don't sing it to your teacher. Sing it to the Lord. blessed today to have Mr. Jason Miller from Bartlett Baptist Church, and he's got some fun-looking stuff up here he's going to share with us. Y'all give him a round of applause and welcome him. Thank you, Ms. Kim. Uh, yeah, we've got some things to do today. My name is Jason. So grateful to be here. Normally when I'm here, I'm with the older kids, but here's the deal. I have four children. I have a four-year-old, I have a 10-year-old, I have a 12-year-old, and I have a 13-year-old. So you guys are my people. I get it. 
Uh, I work at Bartlett Baptist Church, and I used to be in student ministry, and now I have to work with adults. But I'm really excited about being with you all today. Today we're going to talk a little bit about something that's near and dear to my heart. I have four kids, like I mentioned, but sometimes they don't always get along. How many of you sometimes argue with your brother or sister? Sometimes, not all the time. Put your hands down. How many of you today, before you came to school, argued with your brother or sister? Yeah, happens a lot at my house too. Now, at, put your hands down. At the end of the day, my children love each other, but sometimes they just have a hard time getting along. And so we as parents, we have to pray a lot for our children because we really desperately want them to get along. But you know what? Sometimes uh, our families struggle, but at the end of the day, we love each other. And the same is true for churches. Churches are our family. And the Bible talks a lot about how we as a church are family, and we want to love each other. Sometimes we struggle. Sometimes, at the end of the day, uh, we want to love and encourage one another. So today we're going to talk a little bit about encouragement. And I'm really excited about getting to do that with you guys today, okay? The Bible talks a little bit about encouragement in Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. It says, let us encourage one another that our hearts would not be hardened by sin. Encouragement is really a cool thing throughout all of God's word. And I'm an encourager. It's one of my spiritual gifts. I love to come alongside people and encourage them. It's just something that comes very easy for me. But for others, it's hard. The Bible talks a lot about encouragement. In fact, there's some, there's some really great scriptures we're going to look at today about a guy named Paul who was a great encourager to the churches he started. Uh, so what is encouragement? Encouragement is when we say nice things, when we help other people, when we build people up rather than tear them down, right? It's one of the things that we do often. Uh, we may not realize this, but sometimes we don't say nice things. And when we don't say nice things, it hurts people's feelings. Well, that's not encouragement. Sometimes um, if there's an opportunity we can help somebody and we just walk right on by, let's say someone dumped their food on the floor and, and, uh, and we don't help them, uh, that's not very encouraging. And so the scripture talks about that in kind of a, a spiritual way as well. We all need encouragement. It's really important that we understand that. Acts chapter 20 helps us understand that just a little bit more. What's neat about Acts chapter 20 is it really talks about Paul. Now, Paul was kind of a, a great character. One of the things that Paul did is he was a church planter. He started churches. And uh, today, I want to talk a little bit about a couple of churches he started. Now, the way he started churches is he took mission trips. How many of you guys know anybody who's ever taken a mission trip? Yeah. So Paul, in Scripture, took three really big mission trips. And here in Acts chapter 20, talks about his third mission trip. Now, what's neat about his third mission trip that's different than the first two mission trips is this. Paul didn't start any churches on his third mission trip. What he did is he went to the churches that he already started, and he encouraged them. All right? Which one are you? You're Lily, right? So my daughter's name is Lily. You have to be my guinea pig. Lily, will you come help me for a second? Lily, you are going to be Greece. Not the show, not the TV, just the land. All right? If you'll stand right here for me. And you want to come help? Come right up here. Your name is? Hannah. Hannah. Will you stand over here and be Macedonia for me? Actually, Hannah, will you take 10 steps that way? Yeah, keep, that wasn't 10. You've got to keep going. There you go. One more. One more. I'm just being silly. Okay, so here's the deal. So Paul went around to the churches in Greece, and he encouraged them. And then he went all the way to Macedonia, right? And he went back to a little bit to Greece, and then he spent a lot of time in Macedonia. Everyone say Greece. Greece. This is important. Everyone say Macedonia. Macedonia. Okay, so what's the cool thing about Paul in Acts chapter 20? He didn't start the churches in Greece. He came to Greece, and he said, hey, Greece, you would say, I say hi, you say. Okay. Hey, Greece. Hi. How's it going? Good. I'm so excited that you're growing, Greece. Way to go. Thank you. All right. So here's the deal. Paul's going around, and he's high-fiving the churches at Greece. He's doing a great job. He's saying, keep it up. And then he goes to Macedonia, and he says, great job, Macedonia. How's it going? Good. You doing well? Mm -hmm. I'm really proud of you. You're doing awesome. You're doing a great job holding that sign. Mm -hmm. What am I doing? I'm encouraging her, right? Y'all see that? So what's interesting about Paul is he doesn't start the churches but he encourages them. High five right here one more time. Y'all give him a round of applause. They did a good job being Greece and Macedonia. Okay, so while Paul is in Macedonia, he spends some time with the churches 
or the church leader uh, of Ephesus. And we know that the church that started Ephesus was, it comes out of the book of Ephesians. And so we spent a lot of time there, and he's talking to them, and he's encouraging them. And what's interesting about Paul is he spends, and we want to learn from Paul, one of the things we can do about encouragement today is we can see three ways that Paul encouraged the churches in Greece and where else? Macedonia. As he encouraged them, there are three things that he did that we can do. When Paul did this 2,000 years ago, we can do it today. Really simple ways that we can be encouragers to other people. Okay? One of the best ways we can be encouragers to others is simply by our presence. What's interesting about our presence is, is that when I'm around certain people, I just love being around them. There are certain people in your life that you love to hang out with. So my son, Sawyer, he's four. And one of the favorite things that Sawyer likes to do is he likes to get up and he likes to come to my bed. I don't know if you guys have ever done that or not, but he likes to come to bed. And Sawyer is not a real um, still sleeper. In fact, this morning, um, I felt something hit my nose and it was his foot. And I thought, how on earth did your foot get up here? He loves to come snuggle. And what's interesting about that is my bed really isn't that more comfortable than his bed. It's not that my room is more comfortable than his room. In fact, there's a whole lot more toys in his room than there are in my room. But for him, he just likes to be near me. The power of presence is really cool. So in Acts chapter 20, there's a great couple of verses that help us understand this power of presence, the power of just being near someone. And so what Paul does is he goes to this church in Macedonia and, uh, and begins to talk to them, especially the leaders of the Ephesian church. And he says in verse 7, On the first day of the week, they gathered together to break bread. And Paul talked with them, attending to depart on the next day. And he prolonged his speech until midnight. So Paul was there. They were going to break bread. They were going to have a meal together somewhere probably about 5 or 6 o'clock. And then the scripture says that he spoke until when? Until when? Until when? Now, how many of you have to go to bed before midnight? I have to go to bed before midnight. Okay. So Paul preaches and talks to them until midnight. Now listen to this passage. It continues on in verse 9. Well, it goes on to verse 11. And it says, When Paul had gotten up and broken bread and eaten, he conversed with them a long while, all the way until daybreak. Paul spent all night talking to those people. Not just midnight, but 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Six in the morning, he spent all night talking with them. Why did he do that? Because he loved them, and he knew that he could encourage them, because Paul was kind of a big deal. Now, how many of you play basketball? Anybody play basketball? Put your hands down. How many guys play soccer? Anybody play soccer? Put your hands down. How many guys um, like to sing or play music? Put your hands up, hands down. So let's pretend, for you guys who like to play basketball, let's pretend that here at Tipton Rosemary Academy, LeBron James comes walking right through here. All right? The king, LeBron, says, hey, guys, how are you? And you're going to go, oh, it's LeBron, right? You're going to freak out a little bit. And he's not, he may say, hey, I'm just here to watch you. And you are going to be so overwhelmed with just his presence. Some of you guys play soccer. So my son's uh, favorite soccer player is Lionel Messi. He plays for FC Barcelona. And um, he's a great soccer player. And so if Messi walked in here and spoke in Spanish to you, Hola, right? And he talks to you. You are going to be overwhelmed just by his presence. And let's just say LeBron or let's say Messi or some of you guys like to play music or sing. Let's say Carrie Job walks in and she's a worship leader and she comes and she just wants to sit at your choir practice. Or Messi just wants to come to your soccer practice or LeBron just wants to come to your basketball game. Their presence would be incredibly encouraging to you. That would be a day that you would remember forever. Well, Paul was kind of a big deal. And so Paul just being with them is, is really important to them, and it encourages them. So some of us have friends. How many of you guys have a friend? How many of you guys have more than one? I, great, good. Friends are good for us, right? Scripture talks a lot about being a, a good friend. Let's say you've got a friend who's um, having a tough time. They're a little empty. And it could be that they're struggling in school. It could be that something's gone on at home that's been a real hard time for them. It could be that they forgot their homework. It could be that they're having just a tough day. Well, one of the things we can do with our friends is that we can encourage them with our presence and help fill them up, right? And so they're not only empty, but we want to help them along the way. So a little bit of us goes towards them, and we're just going to say, hey, you know, I, wanna, I just want to be with you. 
And so this might mean that you've got a friend who's sitting alone at lunch table, and you go sit next to them. Or maybe they've got no one to play with on the weekend, and you go to their house, and, and you're just there. Maybe you don't say anything necessarily. You're not really doing much for them, but just your presence means a whole lot. Some of your moms and dads have friends like this. Just being around them lifts them up. And so you have friends like this too. Just hanging out, just being together is such an encouragement. So Paul does that in Acts chapter 20. But he not only is, a, is an encourager by his presence, but he's an encourager by his words. He says some great things to the leaders there and encourages them to be healthier, to be stronger, and to make sure that they're going to grow and to be the kind of church that God wants them to be. Our words are very important, aren't they? Everyone say yes. Ephesians 4.29 tells us that no corrupting talk should ever come out of your mouth, but only is what's helpful for building each other up. I say this verse a lot at my house because my boys, they are so close in age and they love each other, but often they get frustrated with one another, and so their words aren't to build up, but often they use words to tear down. And so we talk about that and we encourage one another. And so these last several weeks have been really good because we have really tried to make sure that our home is an encouraging one. So we want to make sure we use our words, our nice words, right? Respectful words, helpful words. We can build each other up and fill each other with our words, which is really pretty important, okay? So I, had two, I need a guy. I need a, a, a boy volunteer. How's it going, buddy? Come on up here. You, yeah, a little slow on that one. Sorry, buddy. What's your name? Nolan. Nolan. How old are you? Uh, 11. Uh, 11, or are you 11? You're 11. So you're in the fifth grade? Yeah. What do you like to do for fun? I don't know. You don't like to have fun? You like to play outside? All right, it's good. I like to play outside. We're okay, we're good. So, Nolan, I see that you, um, you've got some really great hair. It's nice. Yeah, it looks good, buddy. You did well. Uh, you did really well um, um, speaking God's word today. High five. Way to go. I like your shoes. Those are some sweet shoes as well. All right, so here's what I've done. Oh, everyone really wants to see your shoes. You should give them a little shake. Nice job. Way to go. All right. So here's the deal. You know what I know about Nolan? He's got some good hair. He likes to play outside. He's got some great shoes. And he can read God's word really, really well. So what did I just do with Nolan just a moment ago? Right here, buddy. Yes, sir. I encouraged him. How did I do that? I complimented him. I used kind words, right? Bro, you're awesome. Well done. Give it a hand of five. I'll give him a, a round of applause. Good job. See, was that hard? Was it difficult? Guess what? Guess what I did? I encouraged a stranger. I don't know Nolan, but you know what? Now we're kind of friends, right? You know me, I know your first name, and I like to play outside, and you got great shoes. So here's the deal. I can encourage people that maybe I don't know real well. Nice words, okay? Uh, it's really important that we use respectful words with our moms and dads. So someone tell me a respectful word that would encourage our mom or dad. Yes, ma'am. What's a respectful word? Do you have an idea? So if your mom or dad says, please take out the trash, you would say, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. Very good. That's a very respectful word for our parents. That's really important that we use that. Can I just tell you as a mom or dad, as, a, as well, I'm not a mom, but can I tell you as a dad, that when my sons or my daughters say yes, sir, to me, it encourages me because they're using respectful words. They're using nice words, okay? And then they're using compliments. What's a great compliment you can give somebody? Miss Lily. Your outfit is nice. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. I worked hard. Yes, sir. What's a compliment we can say? Yes, sir. You look very nice. Good job. What's another compliment? Right here. I like that hair. Go ahead, buddy. Thank you. That is a great compliment, okay? We can encourage people by our words. One of my favorite compliments I like to give others is you're awesome, okay? You are awesome. So I have a challenge for you. Everyone say Challenge challenge for you today from now until the moment you go to sleep I want you to compliment five people not five compliments to the same person but five compliments to five people okay so one compliment for five people so tell somebody they're awesome go to your mom or dad and say mama let me, can you want to know how you can get some really encourage your mom listen right here how can you encourage your mom you can encourage your mom by telling her she looks pretty today oh Moms love that stuff, okay? You can go to your dad and say, Dad, you're the best pop in the whole world. You know what? Dads love that stuff. You can even encourage your last way we encourage our friends. If we have friends who are empty, we can encourage them. And Paul does this. In Scripture, he talks about his words, and he instructed the churches 
But then he uses his actions. In fact, in Scripture there in Acts chapter 20, verses 20 and 21, he says, I labored for you through tears and trials. And so Paul tells the church there that he was faithful to serve them. Faithful even though it was difficult. He did the right thing the right way all the time. And then at the very end of Acts chapter 20, verses 35 and 34, he reminds them that he's there for them, and then he prays for them. What's interesting about Paul is he doesn't just tell them that God loves them. He doesn't just tell them how to start and grow churches, but then he goes and he shows them. He shows them that he loves them. He shows them that he was faithful to serve even when it was hard, and then he shows that he's going to pray for them, and he does that, and he stops, and he prays for them. His actions were such an encouragement to, their, to the people there um, in Macedonia, and we can be encouraged by our friends as we serve and help and love and compliment and come right alongside them. But guess what? When I serve my friends and I love and encourage them and I speak to them, I'm not only filling up my friends, but I'm filling up myself as well. Because when God designed us, he designed us not just to give away, because when we give, we're often the ones who receive. When I compliment others, I sure, it makes them feel good, but guess what? It makes me feel good. When I use nice words and encouraging words and respectful words, when I am helping someone just by hanging out, or when I go to someone and I serve them, it makes me feel good. And that's the way God designed us. So I'm going to challenge you this week. How many compliments do you have to give away today? Five compliments, okay? And I want you to be reminded today as you think about filling up a friend and encouraging them not only with your presence, not only with your words, but also with your actions, that not only are you building them up and encouraging them, but you're also building yourselves up, okay? And you're filling yourselves up. Here's what I want to do today. You guys have been an awesome crowd. I want, again, there's that word, awesome. I want to encourage you by praying for you. Can I pray for you today? Let me pray for you today. Let's pray together. So, Father Jesus, we thank you so much for how you love us. We thank you for how you give us an example in Paul and how he encouraged the churches. But, Father, we see the greatest example of encouragement in your son, Jesus, who loved us, who died on a cross for us, and that, Father, Scripture reminds us that if we believe in the Lord Jesus, he is faithful to save us. And so, Father, I pray that we be reminded that just as Jesus served us and loved us in such a great way, you called us to serve and love others in a very great way as well. For some of us, that means our classmates today. We need to love and encourage them. For others of us, it might be our brother and sister that we had an argument with this morning. Maybe when we see them this afternoon, we would say, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the words that I said. I'm sorry for the way that I acted. Would you forgive me? What a great way to encourage our brother and sister. Some of us need to make sure that we're using respectful and nice words, not only to our brothers and sisters and classmates, but also our teachers, our coaches, and our parents. Help us, Father, to be people of encouragement. Just like Paul encouraged the churches, that we would encourage others. And Lord, as we do that, as we build them up and fill them up with our words, our actions, and our presence, Lord, help us be reminded that we would fill each other up as we do that. Lord, it's us who receive the greater blessing. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your son. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys so much. All right, y'all give him a round of applause for a big thank you for being here and sharing with us. That was awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. All right, and y'all stand up, and we'll have uh, Miss Hannah's going to give us one last closing prayer before we go back to our studies. Bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for today, our food, and our fortunate lives, and that we are able to come to this school. Thank you for the ability to come together as a school and worship you. There are maybe other prayer requests out there, and I pray that you bless them too. Thank you for sending your son to die for our sins and that we are so blessed to know you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, y'all go back to your classrooms and don't forget your five compliments and your being an encourager today and always.